All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. Here I am, Mikey here, SD Fish and Sips. And today, this morning, I'm taking you through a walkthrough of my solo skin. I'm gonna start off by talking about storage and transportation with the solo skiff. Then I'm gonna move on to uh, the gas, the motor, and then I'm gonna talk about rigging and mounting on it, including fish finder and bait tank. So check it out, here we go, let's get some. Number one is gonna be your storage and transportation. Where are you gonna be storing it and how are you gonna be getting it down to the beach? One option that you can go with that I have right here, this option right here, this is the trailer that I have my solo skiff sitting on. So this is how it sits in the garage right here, on the trailer, ready to go. As you've seen with the trailer, I just grab it by hand up front right there and then just roll it out the back uh, garage door. Then hook it up to the back of my truck. I got a full size F-150. That's when I'm fishing locally. If I'm fishing La Jolla, if I'm fishing Shelter Island, if then I'm just gonna have this on the trailer, go right down there easy. What beaches are you gonna be launching at? Are you gonna be using ramps? Are you gonna be using the sand? So you've seen all my videos, you've seen the fish I'm catching, smash around, doing all this cool stuff. You wanna get a solo skiff, then you're gonna to have to ask yourself, how am I gonna get this thing down to the beach? Where am I gonna be storing it at? If I'm gonna take this show on the road right here, the motor comes off the back. Got the wheels right here. These are the set of wheels that I have when I'm traveling with the solo skiff. And these fit in the, the groove, the slots underneath these two bars. These were actually made originally for a Hobie Pro Angler 14. I rolled it down the beach down in Mexico before. And I use this when I'm traveling up to Northern California, chasing salmon and all that good stuff. So I got the sand tires here for on the road when I, this goes in the bed of my truck. I also have a friend down here in San Diego, Mark R. And on YouTube, check out his channel. I'll put the link to that. He's got a, a video where he, he builds a ramp, a ramp to, to bring the solo, solo skiff back up into the back of the truck. But one thing that I should go over what happened right here, my, my bar is gone. But there's usually a bar here on this insert, but it shook free. The bar shook free and then the insert ended up getting stripped out and spinning. I couldn't put it back on. So storage and transportation, that's a that's a key factor. I haven't seen anybody car top these. I'm sure that it's possible if you took the engine off, you could put it on the top of your car. But I think that your best bet, you're gonna want a truck if you're gonna have a, a solo skiff. And then it fits here in the garage, it's 13 and a half feet long. And you can see that it fits in my garage nicely. Number two is gonna be your motor and your gas and how you're working that. The type of motor that I've gone with is I got a Mercury six horsepower right here. There's different options with the motor. You could go electric. I haven't seen very many people do that. Uh, I've gone with gas here. So I got a six horsepower gas Mercury uh, outboard. It's the short shaft. I believe it's 15 inches long. You got three and a half up to the max that this fits on is uh, six, they say, solo skiff. And I've heard my buddy said he modified the transom and he got an eight horsepower Honda, Mako Bob, rest in peace. He got an eight horsepower Honda on this thing and he was telling me, get up to 20 miles an hour. Because right now with the six horsepower, I do about 13 to maybe 15 if I'm banking off waves. The five horsepower, I was doing about 12 to 13. So you get a little bit of extra couple miles an hour with the six horsepower versus the five. Once you got your motor going, you gotta think about how you're gonna feed because it has this gas tank. Mine has a, has a gas that you can put inside of it right here and it holds about a third of a gallon. But as you can see from there, it's perfectly clean. I've never put gasoline inside of that because what I've had is I've had this external feed right here. 
So if we take a look, I'm gonna put this back on here. Okay, you can see right here the external feed that I have going for the gas tank. So it hooks up right here with the line. This comes in and off. That's the connection that we're working with right there. So this hooks up to the motor like so. And then the line comes through. I have a pump, hand pump. I use this for priming and this pushes fuel up in to the motor to get it started because the fuel's coming through this line. Then I have this hole right here cut in the back of it. I should, I'm gonna seal this up and get a better gasket or seal because I believe that water can splash and come in here and it's actually getting inside. So if we go underneath the seat right here, if you all have seen my seat video, put the link to that one in this video, little card right there. But here's what the inside, what we're looking at with the gas tank right here. So as you can see, I need to get some gas. I'm about halfway gone. Okay, so inside the solo skiff here fits the Tohatsu three gallon external tank. It's hooked up with a special fitting right here. This whole kit comes complete. You can buy this complete. I have this link in my description on the Amazon for this line with the pump, that fitting, and then the gas can and these fittings right here. So this fits nicely inside. This is how I'm running extra three gallons. This gets 20 miles a gallon. I got three gallons inside here. Then I can bring another two gallons right here. That puts me into a hundred miles for the day. And then I'm using this one just kind of for transporting gas. I need to go pick some up. Can you feel it? Can you hear them? The tunes. Love it at the gas station. Maybe get some coffee, only 50 cents. Here we go, let's fill up. It's always good to have gas in here. So that's how I'm working the gas and the motor. That's the number two thing I'm, I'm saying you should consider when buying a solo skiff. I wanna go over something with the motor right here though. With the motor, I make sure I got rope tied down from the rail to the motor here, just in case something happens and I flip, I don't lose it. So I got those ropes on either side and those are securing the motor down. I've also heard a story where somebody, the motor actually got caught on a lobster rope line and it shot down and then catapulted up and launched off that way. So that's something that you wanna consider with the motor. So the motor here and the gas, how you're working the gas feed on the inside, and the line going up, that's big time consideration with the solo skiff. How you're gonna power this thing? Cause last resort, I do have the paddle. I paddled it before. You can see that and when I did that in Cambria on another video, I'm always working with this. And that's why it's so important, my water jug. Cause I'm rinsing it out every single time. I'm making sure that I rinse this out and then I got my WD-40 here and I'm spraying it down and I'm keeping the engine all greased up and all nicely maintained. So that's about a year right there of heavy, heavy, hard use. But my motor is going strong and it fires up first pull and I'm absolutely loving it. So that's the motor that I got going, the six horsepower Merc on the Solo Skiff fishing sit. Okay, so the third thing that you're gonna wanna consider if you're gonna be getting a solo skiff is how am I gonna be mounting and holding all of these rods and reels and getting my gear out there onto the water. So I'm gonna show you what I did right here. There's a lot of different ways to do this. You can check out other people out there, but I'm just gonna give you a walkthrough how I did it. So the first thing I started with was these long, Hobie H rails. So actually I have four. One, two, three, four long Hobie H rails, and then two short Hobie H rails. That was my starting point. Then I'm from the Hobie H rails, you have the actual rod holders. 
And I like the Scotty tubes for the upright vertical that I'm not using, that I'm just storing at the time in between. And then there's, you can do it a couple different ways. Here you got one, one style of a rod holder. These are both, all of the Scotty tube mounts. Those are also in the description, Scotty tube mounts. But then you have the low profile Scotty H-rail mount. So that's what this is, it's the clamp for the H-rail. Then you got this style for the rod holder and you got this style. You gotta screw this onto the plate down here because essentially it comes with this and that. One thing I wanted to mention right here though that I did was that these had a tendency to wanna twist and turn. Yeah, you see that, this one? How that twists and turns. And I didn't do it to this one, but what I did, oh, there it is right there. Didn't go all the way through though. This one, it locked it in. So you can put a little screw or something like that to try to keep it from twisting because I've had some issues with this, these twisting. So that's the downside to the H-Rail. I've got to get into the bad stuff and the good stuff. So one of the things I have noticed is that these can, like this side is loose. See that? I got to tighten that side up. This side's a little bit tighter. It's good. That's just what you're working with right there when it comes to the rod holders in the back for vertical. Then I got my little goodie box right here with my GPS handheld waterproof radio. I got a pair of pliers, cutters on a leash. I got a bait knife and then I got my Rasta spike the skull. On this side, I got the uh, two game clips and a, a bat to bonk them, to whack them with. That's what I got going back there, back behind the seat, six rod holders, vertical. Then in front, I got another two long ones. This side, I usually have my Hobie rod holder. This is how that, this one comes, so you don't have, it's not a separate, two piece see how it's different this is all one piece this comes with the, the piece here and then the piece here so that's why i got two of these on each side that i'm usually trolling off of the front here the, the right side is what i like to troll the nomad and live bait off of so i'll usually have this down like so this one upright with my jig stick ready to go and then i got my standing bar up front here so that this is ready to brace against to jig off of. Danny, thank you for mentioning the eight, the standing H bar that I got right here is awesome to have to be able to stand up against and cast towards fish. But what this railing is also really nice for is just spinning around in the seat, being able to use this and brace against. So you can use that to stand, spinning around in the seat, or like you've seen in my other videos, you can put the rod holder up top and troll up high. So you gotta go with the seat. How are you gonna be sitting, getting comfortable? So you can check out my video. I'll put the link in the description and the card link that you can click right now to check out the seat. But this is what I did with the swivel seat. Okay, so now I went through the railing, through the seat, through the motor, through all that stuff. Next item that you're gonna wanna think about is some electronics. The two that I have is I got my fish finder and then I have my bait tank. So the fish finder right here, I keep the battery. Actually, no, the fish finder right here, the battery is over here because I got to make a repair. I'm going to show you right now how I make a repair for a fish finder battery and do a connection because I went to turn it on yesterday and it wasn't working. So we're going to go check that out. Here's how I'm making my fish finder battery repair. First things first, you're going to want to strip the large outside wire off. Okay, once you strip that large outside wire off, then strip out the smaller wire. So that's not a good sign that the wire is black. Now you got the wires stripped out, you're gonna cut them to equal lengths. Okay, you got the wires cut to equal lengths for one side. That's the battery side. Now you gotta do the same thing for your connection side. Cut those, cut off the old connection. Strip one side. Strip the 
other side so that they're the same length like that that's that's key to have them the same length then take some of this heat shrink tubing Take your waterproof connectors, make these in different gauges, and that's the kind of the problem that I'm working with right here. Put it on one side, black, red, red, black, red. See, I'm already struggling a little bit. So we're gonna crimp the red first. There you go, put the red in, crimp it down. We're gonna go with, we're gonna do the heat shrink on this side, so. That side we put the waterproof connector. This side we're gonna go with connect those like so. Okay. And torch it. Bam. Now you take the electrical tape. Okay. Now I got a new connection. Time to test it out. Come over here, let's take a look. There's my connection. We just made the repair to the battery and the connection, so it's always important to put some dielectric grease. See, so put the little bit of this grease on your connectors to help it last longer. So yeah, dielectric grease, or you can use WD-40, whatever it's gonna be, but that's my lithium ion battery that I got. Right there, connected in, powered up to power the fish finder. Lowrance hook five. You're gonna probably want some eyes down in the water with the fish finder if you're fishing off the solo skiff, at least here in San Diego. All right. That's how we're working it now. New transducer mount. That works. And then I have my bait tank. Right here, up front, and that goes wire into here. I'll throw some clips up of here, me using it out in the bay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get the bait tank turned on now. I got my battery inside here. Check out what's going down in the hatch. This is my fish finder battery right here. This little plastic thing I got from Target works out great. Then there's my bait tank battery with my connection. Firing up to get the bait at the bait barge with the guys right there. So just make this connection right here and plug that in and motor's fired right up. There you go. That pump that's cut in oh, by OEX right there will Feed water up here. Turn on that battery. We're flowing. Open this up. See, that's what I'm talking about with kelp stuck in there. there Control, but how much I let in. And that, that takes care through pretty much the walkthrough of the items that I talked about before. You got your storage and your transportation, how you get in the skiff down to the water. You got your rigging, your hardware, your mounting on the outside, the electronics, and you got your motor.